Hello there, it's Gabby here for you and I hope this finds you well. In the, this podcast, I am going to be talking about what does success mean for you? Um, and this is something that I struggled with for many, many years and I've made some mistakes along the way. And it was really brought into sharp focus when my cancer treatment ended. And I really began to look at my life and think about how I had been chasing what I thought success was. But was it really fulfilling me? And as always, there's no judgment with any of this. But I know now that I coach women who have finished their cancer treatment. And quite often, nearly always, that period is a time for reflection, for looking at their lives, working out what is working well for them. What do they want more of? Working out maybe what is not working so well and how do you manage that? But really defining what does success mean to you? Really defining what does success mean to you? Such a personal thing. Um, and as always, I, there's no judgment here from me. I'm not going to tell you what you should do, but I've got seven suggestions for you. And things you might want to consider if you want to feel better about the way that you're looking at success and maybe let go of some of the judgment and maybe be a little bit happier in the choices that you're making. I'm hoping this will be useful for you. OK, so for me, the first step that I had to do and this what I'm telling you took me a long time to work this out and I made some mistakes. But along the way, I learned some tools, some tips and techniques as I trained to become a coach that I wish I'd have had back in the day when I felt lost. Because looking back, I really needed to embrace a new definition of success. And my story, it's typical for a lot of people that I meet, is for many years, I thought that being successful was having the big job at work. I worked really hard. Um, it didn't come easy to me. I didn't go to university straight from school. I worked really hard. I studied part time. I worked my way up the corporate career ladder. And again, I worked in some organisations that weren't always mindful of home life balance I think maybe things are improving a little bit now in some organizations but for me I worked really hard for a long long time I worked long hours I was very very stressed but I kind of thought that was what you had to do and I kind of thought it was worth it to get to where I was when I was at age 39 where I was a director of a big company I had a big team and I was quite proud of myself for achieving that from the kind of lowly beginnings that I started my career with. It didn't come easy and I worked really hard for that. And I thought that's what success was. The downside of that was I was so stressed. I had major imposter syndrome. Um, I was constantly looking over my shoulder, wondering, am I good enough? Um, have I done the next task? Have I made a mistake? Are they going to find me out? Constantly living at that level of stress is not good for anybody, but I think a lot of us do. And it wasn't really until I had a cancer diagnosis that gave me an opportunity to step back and examine the way that I was looking, to examine the way that I was living, I should say, and think, is this really how I want to be living my life? And is it worth it for the big job if you have to be successful? Um, and I'm not suggesting that you have to choose health or success at work because I really believe you can have both. But my success, my vision and my version of success now looks very different than it did 20 years ago. And I would just do anything that my boss asked me to do. So my new definition of success is prioritizing my health and my well-being. That is my idea of success, knowing that I'm living a cancer free lifestyle, knowing that I'm making lots of choices um, to improve my health, to improve everything about my happiness as well. I focus on joy and fulfillment. That to me is more important than yeah, you get, get, getting recognition from my boss, for instance, which is something that I really used to feed off. Um, but the bad downside to that is if your boss is having a bad day and tells you that you, you're not so great, that used to really impact on my self-confidence as well. The other thing for my new definition of success is being present in the minute enjoying every minute whether it's just a walk in the park whether it's just having a really good conversation with a friend whether it's enjoying a film or listening to some music but really being present in the moment rather than thinking about I've got 10 things I need to do or what about tomorrow or what about next week now being present in the, in the moment for me that gives me joy and that's part of my definition of success as well the second thing the second step is success on your own terms. And this is such a personal thing that nobody can really tell you. 
and it's something that I work with my coaching clients on is working out, well, what does success on your own terms mean? Setting some personal goals, not ones that are expected of you. You know, I've got a friend who she's a nurse because her mother was a nurse and her mother was a nurse. And that's kind of what's expected of the women in that family. But is that right for her? And again, no judgment. That's something she needs to decide. So I think success on your own terms may, means you taking responsibility, but you deciding what does success mean for you. And once you've done that, it's quite a powerful thing as well to actually reclaim your power. Because we all have choices. We all may have obligations and things that we have think we have to do. But do we? Do we have to do everything that's on our to-do list? I attended a time management course years ago and the guy was quite smart and he said, right, write down everything that you have to do. And we all in the room, we're all senior managers, wrote down, you know, I filled in a, a A4 piece of paper with everything that I had to do. And I said, oh, that, that's interesting. He said, really? You have to do all that? I was like, yeah, yeah, I've got to do all this. And we talked about it. And the end conclusion was that you don't really have to do any of that. You are choosing to do that. All you have to do is breathe to be alive. So I gently remind you that everything else is a choice. What are you choosing to do? Uh, step three of my recommendations is staying focused on progress rather than perfection. And I was guilty of this for so long, um, you know, thinking, oh, yeah, when I've lost a stone in weight, I'll be happy. Or when I've got my next promotion, I'll be happy. When I've delivered the next project, then I can relax. No. To me now, success is about being happy today, whatever weight I am, whatever issues are going on in the world. And celebrating small wins, and they can be really small wins as well. Maybe, you know, you've done something really, you know, to you small. You've uh, maybe complimented somebody on something. Maybe you've made a great cup of coffee or you've made a nice meal or you've done something. Just one small step everywhere, every day to improve your health and happiness but celebrate those small will enjoy them you know bask in that glory for a little while doesn't mean you're full of yourself or you're getting big-headed it means again it's being present in the moment celebrating those small wins because they all add up to a wonderful life big one next is letting go of perfectionism because yeah but trying to be a perfect perfectionist you are setting yourself up for failure nobody is perfect we all make mistakes my darling let me tell you we're all human so if you can let go of that need to be right all the time and let go of that need to be perfect and accept that sometimes you are going to mess up that's life you are human but you know what if you can move forward maybe with a bit of humor or just thinking about well okay i messed up there what can i learn from this i'm not going to do that again what can i learn how do i move forward and learning to enjoy the journey. Like I say, I used to be, when I get to that place, when I've lost the weight, when I've delivered that project, then I'll be happy. No, no, enjoy the journey. Even the ups and downs and the learnings and the things that might go wrong and the things that might go right. But the experience along the way, to me, that is part of being successful now. Okay. The next one I would suggest to you is trying to let go of comparison. So this is step four, letting go of comparison. So you may think, particularly in your cancer journey, oh, well, such a body that I know, she had cancer the same time as me and she's back at work now or she's she's looking great now or her hair's all grown back or whatever. Comparing yourself to somebody else, again, you're setting yourself up for failure. You don't know what's going on in the inside of that person, the inside struggles that they're having. Even if they are sailing through, you are you and they are them and let them do them. Yeah, but try and release the need for external validation. You're not competing against anybody. And I believe that when I set goals for myself and I set goals for myself now in my own personal business. But it's more about trying to be better than the person that I was last week. You know, I'm, um, lots of things I want to learn. And lots of things I want to improve. But that's not because I'm making myself wrong. It's making me want to be better than I was yesterday that's all it is and part of that is learning to be compassionate with yourself and not judging yourself harshly and sometimes we can all fall into the trap of being our own worst critic and you know what the world is full of critics if you listen to them you don't need that what you need to do is become your own best friend in my opinion 
Okay. Uh, step five is balancing ambition with self-care. And this for me has been key. And you know, I will bang on about self-care all the time because for many years it was something that was so sadly lacking in my life. I really believed I didn't have time for self-care. And so many of the people that I work with now, people that I'm coaching, it's one of the biggest things that they can do to improve their quality of their life, to improve their health and happiness is really to learn how to love themselves and how to care for themselves and how to make time and space for whatever it is that self-care means to them. It's, again, it's a very personal thing. And part of that is learning to rest without feeling guilty. And I see so many women, particularly mothers or working women who think, they have to, you know, almost win a prize for being the most hardworking or the one that never sits down or the one that cleans up after every meal. There's no prizes for that. And OK, sometimes it might feel uncomfortable if you've always been in that role. But the most important thing is learning to rest because you need to rest to recover from any illness or just as we're getting older, we all need to rest. It's part of being healthy and happy. So learning to do that without feeling guilty and without being a martyr and without feeling resentful if you're not getting the help around you that you need. OK, give yourself permission to rest. OK, step six um, is one that I see again a lot with the people that I'm working with. It's something that's worked well for me is giving back as a form of success. OK, you might not be the CEO of a big company, but if you are somebody who's a support for somebody else, that is a beautiful way to give back. And many people after a cancer diagnosis will volunteer or even just do some fundraising. If you don't want that personal um, taking on other people's problems, you can do something really positive by supporting an organisation. Maybe that's helped you. Um, I was lucky enough to be um, close to a Macmillan Centre near me when I was going through my treatment. And I'm always happy to go and support their fundraising events uh, because they gave to me and now it's great for me. It, it lifts my spirits to be able to give back. And to me, that's a, a definition of success as well. I know when I go and meet people at the Macmillan, people maybe that are newly diagnosed and I say, oh, yeah, I'm a 16 year survivor. And they're like, oh, oh you look great and you look really happy. Are you doing OK? And it, it, it lifts them and that lifts me. And for me, that's a definition of my success is not only am I still here and I'm happy and healthy, but I'm helping other people to feel good as well. And that for me is worth more than delivering any IT project that I ever delivered back in the day. OK, number seven, the last one here. And again, this is something that I work on a lot with my personal coaching client is creating a vision for your future. That's your vision. That's your vision and your definition of success. What does that mean for you and how you can approach this? A good way to start to approach that is to start with gratitude. What are you grateful for in your life? What makes you happy? What lifts you up? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it some people? It's their fitness and exercise. What is it that you like doing? Start with gratitude for that. And can you get more of that in your life? Because usually there is a way to do it. OK, think about what success was going to look like for you as an individual in the next stage of your life to get you to where mm -hmm. you want to be. OK, what feels meaningful and what feels sustainable to you? Don't say, oh, yeah, I want to work on my fitness and I want to run a marathon next week. If you've never done that before, it's got to be reasonable and achievable for you, something you can feel good about. So with that in mind and a new perspective, Setting new goals is always a good thing to do. And again, you can work with a coach. You can work through this yourself. You can think about setting some new goals. They can be small goals. They can be big goals. And when I talk about corporate life, and I know sometimes I say about stress because I see this a lot and I experience it a lot myself. I'm not saying you can't work in a corporate world and be happy and be stress free because you can you can achieve those things but if you've always worked in a certain way as I did working long hours maybe being a bit of a martyr maybe always volunteering for things maybe you might want to think about changing some of your boundaries maybe you might want to think about the way that you approach work and feeling that you are good enough because I know looking back a lot of my imposter syndrome stemmed from a feeling that I wasn't good enough and I was constantly trying to prove and strive and prove that I was good enough. And you know what? I was all along. And I'm feeling that if you're listening to this, 
you know deep inside you are good enough as well and you deserve to be happy and healthy so thank you so much for listening to this i think anybody that is listening to this after a cancer diagnosis i'd ask you to honor the journey that you've been on be proud of yourself for surviving for keeping going when it's been a tough day and as always i'm here for you if you want to reach out to me i'd love to hear from you thank you so much for listening have a great week stay safe and stay sane and i'll speak to you very soon thank you my love Bye-bye.